Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Svelte. And Svelte is a framework or a compiler that is somewhat like React but even more reactive. Um, it's a bit hard to explain but in essence it's something that pre-compiles your code so everything in your code will have references to other things in your DOM, for instance, and, and so on. So when you are running Svelte code, it actually compiles to something that will run faster because when you are running a React uh, implementation, for instance, you have a three uh, DOM tree that you need to go through and check if you need to update anything in this tree. And with Svelte, you never have to check if something should update, it updates directly. So it's much more like lit HTML, but in a um, kind of reactive bundling. So I got uh, introduced by this, by the creator of this, uh, that had a talk about this, it's a very good talk. Uh, so if you want, go look at that. But I wanted to introduce it to you so you can uh, see a, a little demo of how it works and so on. So on, on GitHub there is an example app that you can create just by running npx dig, dig it svelte js template web uh, webpack svelte app. I also tried to get it running with rollup. But sadly, rollup is not something that I have worked with lots before. And the example app didn't work well. And actually extending it with a Svelte code was not uh, really feature rich at, uh, at the moment. So Svelte is very new. It's just released as 1.0. And I guess that that rollup plugin was also very new. So it didn't have any example code and so on. So we can look at the webpack config here. Uh, it's very simple. We have some development and production environment and uh, it will resolve every extension of uh, JavaScript's modules, JavaScript and Svelte code. And it will output something in the public directory. And then we have some rules here for where to find your modules and how to load this Svelte loader and that's the actual uh, thing that will take your code hot reload it and actually package it as a production environment or a production code and then we have also style loader and css loader and this is more of a webpack configuration for these and uh, yeah the most of this is webpack uh, code it's not so much about svelte so this rule package here for Svelte code is more what you need to uh, keep in mind when you're talking about Svelte. So it will uh, hot reload and handle the, your CSS. So here uh, we see this Svelte package JSON and the things I want to point out here is the Svelte compiler and the Svelte loader. So this Svelte is a general package for Svelte with the compiler and so on. And then we have the Svelte loader that uses that compiler. And down here you can see that we could all build this environment with Webpack and we can also run the Webpack dev server and that will hot reload everything when we are running our application. So let's go into our main JS here and see the code. So here we have some Svelte app up here so we call it app and it's located in the svelte app uh, app svelte uh, file we will load that and here we will create a new application from that svelte app and it will be targeted to the document body so this main js will be loaded in an index js we can open that up as well if we have it public here so here we see that we'll, it will load this bundle in this HTML template here. Uh, so in the document body we will put our application and it will take some properties. And here we see that it takes the property name of world. So I, I th think you can see where this is going. 
and then we set the app to uh, our window so we can find it in our window object and then we will export this uh, default app. So this is the little starter script in JavaScript to handle this Svelte application. So what did we actually put in our application? So here is all of our Svelte code. I haven't uh, added anything from the marketplace to see Svelte code. So I see here that we actually have some Svelte implementation here. So maybe I should add this just so we can see this a little bit uh, better. So here we have the Svelte um, file uh, that in a little bit better uh, context highlighting. So here we see that we export uh, a variable name and that is actually the name that we use in our main JS. So the property here is connected to this export here. So we export something that should be visible outside of this and we are able to mo modify this outside of our script here or our uh, Svelte object. Then we have a counter in here that we put to zero and then I have my little professions array here and I'm uh, Daniel, I'm a developer. Uh, Curry, that's my cat and uh, she is a sunbather. So that's the professions I have in my huge array. Uh, I have a little function here that handles clicks and update this count variable. And what you need to keep in mind here is that this count up here is actually data that is inside of our state. So when we do a, an update on our state here, we actually push the state to the Svelte environment. So the Svelte compiler will see this variable and see that this is some state that will update and create handlers for each update in your application. So this will just work. Um, then we have down here that we put some styling on our H1. Not important, it comes from the actual standard uh, application. Here is also part of the standard application. Type out hello name, so that will be hello world in this H1. And you see here that we have some templating in our HTML. And then we have a button and buttons have some on targets. In this case, we take the uh, the click target or the click uh, handler and we add the handler of this click here also using our templating and then inside of the button we say that it was clicked count times and then we have another template here that says that if it's one then we should say that it's time clicked one time or otherwise we say clicked two times for instance. Uh, I also added a little if statement down here so we can see how those work. So here we have some templating where we start an if statement and we end the if statement down here. And I just say that count should be larger than five. And then we will have this little output down here. And I also wanted to show you a little for each or an each uh, loop down here. So we just say each over our array and then we just pick out the different properties from that array. So it's very Java -like, JavaScript-like. Uh, it's very close to pure JavaScript. There is some actual added keywords here and there. Uh, and some things are a bit changed to the language just so the compiler can find different elements and can find different uh, things that it needs to work with. Uh, but I think it's very straightforward. These few examples I had here, I just saw the code once and I wrote it out, tried it, even though I didn't know exactly how it worked. I tried what I thought was JavaScript native code and it just worked. So I think it's very approachable, this language. Uh, so let's see it in action. Let's go over to our little web page here. We have our hello world up here. We see that we type out Daniel developer and curry sunbather. 
And if we click this a number of times here, when we come above five times, we get we are getting there, uh, this little output down here. A and this application just works in our dev environment. Uh, I've started this by re just running um, npm run dev in, in the console. And it will uh, start up and compile the code over and over as we go along. So if I go in here and uh, do some simple change, let's say that this should actually be done every six times uh, like that, then it will require six times. If I change it to three times, it's down here again and it's handled on three times. It doesn't save the state that I'm in at the moment when I'm changing things, but you see that it recompiles the code so fast that you can try different scenarios very fast. So this is what I wanted to talk about today. I hope that you found this interesting. Maybe you go out and play with Svelte yourself. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions or questions about Svelte, leave them on the comment section down below. If you want to see this video from the developer, I will leave that in the uh, description of this video as well as this repository if you want to look, it, look at it a little bit closer. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.